Amos chapter 9. I saw the Lord. Capital L. O. R. D. Standing upon the altar. Not the altar in Jerusalem. We're talking about Israel. And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, and the post may shake, and cut them in the head. You know, you read your Bible about that doorway, that lintel. Jesus says, I'm the door. The, the, the Passover night, they would take the blood of the lambs and put it over the door. Uh, Samson grabbed the 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 gates in the in the the post of the gate up a hill. Um, there's something else that came to mind. I can't think what it is now. But there's something about that lintel in the door. It's remarkable in the Bible. A Dagon fell at the threshing floor, the threshold of the floor of the door. Let the post may shake. And cut them in the head. I would think that would be the top. Unless they were images. All of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that flees of them shall not flee away. You're going to run, but you ain't going to get far. And he that escapes of them shall not be delivered. You're not getting away. You may get away, but you ain't getting away. How's that sound? You're gonna get you. You're gonna get in your car, go down the road, and you're gonna run out of gas. Though they dig into hell, I guess I would tell you that hell is under your feet if you can dig. Thence shall my hand take them. Imagine that. They're going to hell by their own works, and God says, "Go ahead." I'm only going to grab you. Though they climb up to heaven. Genesis. Towers. Steeples. Skyscrapers. Rocket ships. Thence will I bring them down. Wouldn't it be funny? I was just thinking. I, was, I meant to something today with the rapture. Wouldn't it be funny that moment when the when the rapture happened, NASA would try to launch a spaceship, and God just got his bad man and go, damn boy, only mine. We don't understand it, man. It got up there and boom, it just came right back. But where are all these missing people? That'd be funny. Something to think about. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, this is what they're going to do at the end of the tribulation. But here, Israel, I will search and take them out the fence. You're not going to hide from God. You're not going to hide from the wrath of God. You can't. How would you like to have this be written? Let's just say your family. Let's say you lived in Israel. How would you like to have this said about you and your family? No matter where you're going to go, God's going to get you. Wouldn't that get you shaking in your boots when you hear Amos say this? Wouldn't you want to get down on your knees and say, God, spare me, deliver me, whatever I need to do, Amos, what do I need to do it? And yet, like Jeremiah, like Ezekiel, who gets on their knees and repents to these messages? No one. And Daniel, the king, comes before the lion's den, and he's shaking. He hasn't slept all night. He didn't have a midnight snack. He had no music. And he comes fearing before the God of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, man, God has brought him down, taken him down, and everything. And he comes and, and worships God, the Father of the heavens. The Jews. How many of them have you read through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Amos that get right? And then, I used to be astonished. Because the first book of the Bible I read when I got saved was Revelation. And I was amazed when you go through those seven plagues of seals, vials, uh, seal, seals, vials, trumpets, and three woes. And there's one point in there that says that 
there's a plague put upon the seed of the bees and, and just scorching. And men cry out with anger to God. And I used to, how? And I'm very weak when it comes to pain. I'm very wimpish when it comes to pain. When it comes to pain, God gets my attention. But do you realize these people are so cold-hearted, so hard-hearted, so stiff-necked, they won't adhere. And being in the public ministry I've been in my Christian life since the, the, the second day I got saved, witnessing to people. I have seen this cold heart in it. And you say, hey, that message, why didn't people come? Why didn't they get right? Why won't they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Nothing has changed from 2016 to 797 BC. Man is wicked. If it wasn't for Noah, do you realize his entire planet would have been just washed out? God said this earth was filled with violence and he said Noah found grace. God can't find grace here. And he's going to wipe them all out. Very few of a raiment just to keep the promise and the covenant that he did with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If there was no Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're gone. Try to find me a Babylonian today. You can't. Try to find a Nineveh man, Ninevite, whatever you call him. You can't. I will search and take them out then. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, there's your submarine. God's after us. I'll go join the Navy and get in the submarine service. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. He can see you inside those submarines even if you're in that deepest trench there in the Pacific Ocean. You ain't hiding from God. Thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. And I forgot what it was, but there was a movie about a submarine that they went underwater and there was a bunch of snakes let loose. And they were biting the people. Where would that plot came from? Came out of the Bible. I was shocked when I read that. I was like, wow, that's a movie. I'm a submarine movie buffer. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, and they are, and they have, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set my eyes upon them for evil, not for good. Isn't that the rich man in hell? Just give me a little tip of water in my finger so I can just cool my tongue. Can't you just show me a little mercy? And gets no answer from God. Absolutely no mercy. My advice to you, do not get God angry with you. I wouldn't mess with him. Now, I want those people that they would say, I'm off the wall, kooky, weird. I press my luck. But, you know, I'm honest with God. And when I'm angry with God, I tell him I'm angry with him. Why hide it from him? Why pretend something to God that I'm not? He knows what I feel. But I wouldn't get so angry to God that I just completely forget him that he shuts me off. God, I don't like what you're doing right now. I have no idea why you're doing it. I just want to let you know I don't like it. And I can't say I don't approve because I don't have to. But to say, Lord, I don't like it. And you're being honest with God and God can work with you. These people are telling God's prophet, get out of here. Go down south, you, you moron. You. you Take your message with you. Go eat your bread down there. Just leave us and get out of our church. Sound familiar for us? And though they go into captivity, and they're going to before their enemies, thence will I command the sword even more, 
and it shall slay them. And I will set my eyes upon them for evil, not for good. The evil is because of their sins. Remember I told you evil is not a sin itself. It's the consequences of sin. Smoke cigarettes. What's the evil? The cancer. Have unruly sexual conduct. What's the evil? A sexual disease. An accident where you may not be able to produce children no more. Go out drinking and driving. What's the evil? You're killing somebody or maiming them or putting yourself in a hospital bed. That's the evil. That's the consequences of sin. See, God's not cruel. Evil. That's what you've done. That's what you deserve. That's what you reaped and now you got a soul. That ain't God's fault. You realize if we did what God wanted us to do, what the Bible said, you realize our lives would be perfect? Like he says to be perfect? But we keep taking our eyes off the word. We keep taking our eyes off him and look what we do. We mess things up. And the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land. The land suffers. God cries out to Cain, I hear your brother's blood crying to me. Droughts and famine are because of sin. The land suffers. And it shall melt. I have no idea. And all that dwell therein shall mourn. And it shall rise up holy like a flood. Destruction. And shall be drowned. As by the flood of Egypt, the Nile River. You know what these waters will do, these tsunamis, they just wipe out everything off the land. If it ain't built upon the rock, utter destruction, if you get what I'm telling you, by what Jesus said. God likens your evil to a flood that comes on, and you better be built upon the rock, or great will be the fall. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven. Where'd you see that word before? In that context. You remember? Remember Noah's Ark? He says, build three stories. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven. Now that could be the three heavens. From here to the clouds, as far as the eagle can fly. As far as the eagle can fly to the, the base of where God's throne is and then God's throne. All right, that's the three heavens. No seven heavens, I'm sorry. Or in the heaven, maybe there are three stories in glory. And has founded his troop, God's troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. Who has this power? The Lord is his name. Not El Nemo. Not global warming. El Gato. El Jesus. Old. Are ye not as the children of Ethiopians unto me? O children of Israel, saith Lord. Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kephtor and the Syrians from Kerr? God's been working with people. Come on, you've seen my work. You've seen what I've done. God's a testimony anywhere. I'm going through my Bible and reading. All, I got all the prayer requests and stuff and things that have happened in my life. Dated my Bible. I look. You know, I got this foot problem right now. I say, hey, oh, you know, we'll look at that. The Lord answered that prayer. Oh, if he answered that prayer, he'll take care of me with this one. Oh, look at that one. Look at that prayer. Look at what he did in my life in that one. Writing your notes and stuff like that in your Bible, when you come across the guys like, oh, wow. Your Bible is your Bible. Mark it. Put your prayers in it. Pray for people in it. Put names. Put dates. Put events. So when you're supposed to read your Bible all the way through. So when you're reading along and you see that note, like, oh. And you'll get those notes at the proper time of your life. 
the next time you read through. God will speak to you through your notes. He'll get you through by past victories. Behold, the eyes of, the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom. So does America think that God can't see her? According to that verse, he can see. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Now we're talking about Israel. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, say the Lord. I'm not going to destroy them all, but you better see what I'm going to do. Wouldn't you like to be in the number that God spares? What, what is the comparison to what we read in Amos chapter 9? Think for a moment. And not, I'm going to get a little out of dispensational, but let's just, let's, from Adam to the baby that was just born right now. Whether your Old Testament, the Gospels, or the church age. Whatever God has told you how to be saved. Let's take those people from Adam to that baby that was just born. Those people that do what God told them to do to be saved. Whatever dispensation they were in. Like Noah was getting that ark. You take those people that had approved of God the way of salvation. They will be in glory somehow. New Jerusalem, the new earth, or the new heavens. Okay? Take those people. A person today who has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Try to picture how many that would be. Now compare it to the population from Adam to that baby that was just born. The entire world population that it lies. And how many will God throw off into the he to hell? Because they have not done what God told them to do. And what you read in Amos chapter 9, you're reading in Noah's time. The entire world heard Noah's message, get in this ship, get in this ark, get in this boat. The judgment's coming. The entire world outside of eight people was destroyed by a flood. Jesus said in his words, enter the straight gate, for straight is the way. Broad is the way that leads into destruction, and many... When you see the story of Israel and the raiment that comes out, that is the raiment, the picture of whoever gets out from the judgment of God, hell, because they actually did what God told them to do. And you have many stories in the Bible where that one little person, that one little multitude of people, very little, four people in this earth, Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel. One of them definitely goes to heaven. One runs away. Noah's Ark. Eight get in the ship. Everyone else died. On this entire world, Jesus had 12 men follow him of the entire population of Israel, besides the women, but truly followed him along. And when he dies on the cross, he has only his mother and John there. Paul, the people start leaving him. When you get to studying the Bible, you got to get one point. Not everybody's going to get saved. Not the majority of people will do what God's told them to do. Get that. Learn it. So don't get discouraged when you're in the street ministry. You're knocking on doors. You're passing out gospel tracts. Whatever you're doing with the gospel that is God approved, don't be discouraged when they don't come. Like we had a police officer come to us one time. Where's your multitude? Going to hell. Well, that's not nice. That's not success. That's not success. Success is doing what God has told you to do. And we're seeing in Amos in, in Israel. My jury of people are going to go to hell. That's how man has been from the foundation of the world. Because of sin. And Satan knew that. Wasn't that a great tool to pull on Eve? 
because of Genesis 3, with the woman disobeying God and Adam following her knowingly, I wonder what the percent of that many is that will go off to a burning hell. And we see it here. For lo, I will command, I will shift the house of Israel among all nations. So he's going to put you through the shifter. He's going to put you through the ringer. He's going to judge you. He's going to find out what the book says about you. He's going to test you. Aren't you glad you're under grace? If you don't make it in the Old Testament unto your dying day, you died and went to hell. Like as corn is shifted in a sieve, that's the, the that's the and when you speak of corn, it's the wheat, it's the barley. You break it away from the stalk, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. He's going to gather up the least grain. He's going to take care of the grain, the ones that will actually produce fruit. For the Lord. Everything else that's dead, that's not good, that's broken, that's devoured, that's moldy, that's scummy, will be judged. There's some coming out. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. How do you like that? And you see that 2016, people, you preach to them the gospel. It ain't going to happen. You're an idiot. Shut up. You're turning people away. Get off my doorstep. That preacher's an idiot. It's not what my preacher says. I don't, you know, blah, 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 and keep on going. How many people are going to stand before the great white throne judge, judgment and have God say, and the evil shall not overtake, prevent you? Hmm? Really? Okay, in that day, boy, we're going to jump time now. We're going to get in our little uh, time machine now. We're going to, in that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen? Now we're back in Jerusalem. Tabernacle of David has fallen. That's the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the sure mercies of David. That is, David, you're not going to want a son to sit on the throne. Matter of fact, I'll even put my son on your throne. Raise up the tabernacle of David has fallen. That's 2016. That dumb of the rock is over there right now. Wait till God brings his hammer to bust it. <laughs> Wait till God steps in Jerusalem and says, Muhammad, get down on your knees, brother. Get down! Worship God and all your followers with you. How do you like to see that day? You want to see those Arabians screaming and hollering with their, you know, their, their, their lamentations when their God has to bow down before my God. And I will raise up his ruins. It's what the place is a ruin. You ever read the time of David and Solomon and wonder what that place really looked like? It says this in Solomon's time you could pick up gold and silver on the streets. Forget the pennies. All the plants. What's it, what's it look like today? I'm not I'm not interested in that whole because it's not holy, first of all. It's cursed. Yeah, Solomon brought apes. I don't know why. Well, the temple was all pure as gold, so yeah. I needed x ray sunglasses with most angel more bro on I. And I will build it as in the days of old. That's prophecy. Because you can't walk over there right now and say, okay, there's Amos. No, it's not there yet. That hasn't happened yet. 
There is a prophecy written there, right there in that Bible right now that's, that has not happened. And I believe it's going to happen. Now, as a born-again child of God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk in that, that, that temple. I don't know. Let me get see. But I know one thing. I'll be able to walk up to that temple and look over the temple and then see the Lord Jesus Christ sit. David could see the temple from his windows. You could see it all over the place. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Ooh, they're going to get more land. The remnant of Edom, there's, there's some Edomites still around. That's the ones of Esau. And of all the heathen, everybody else. They shall possess the remnant of Israel and all of the heathen. Philistines, Syrians, Arabians, which are called by my name. They shall possess the raiment of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name. Those are the people that helped the Jews out in the tribulation period that are the sheep of the uh, Matthew 25 judgment. Saith the Lord that doeth this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It hasn't happened, did it? And God puts it in the present tense. You see how sure God is of himself? Now let me put it as, when I say, why can't we? I mean we. But we. But I mean me. Why can't I put that much confidence in the Lord? If he's got that confidence. That much confidence in himself. That's a bold statement to state. Again, 797 BC is the date that this is written. Take 2016 and add 797 to it, and that's how many years it has not happened. Yet God says, I'm going, I've done it. Brother, I can't even tell you I've done it yes tomorrow. Never mind today. No way. There's no way I can say Thursday night I, I've gone to church. Many things may happen between now and church time that will prevent me from going. And yet God put Lord that do with it. He puts it present tense. No other God, no other religion, no other service to anything, including man, could be so bold and so right to say prophecy happened already. Thank you. In God's own definition, verse 12, the prophecy, verse 11, he ruins his word for prophecy because he says not prophecy because I've already done it. But it's prophecy. Explain that. Where does time come from? One minute from this point, where did that time, where did that minute come from? And where does the minute I just used go? And we have the God who has all power of time. It could drive me nuts thinking about it. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman, that's the guy who goes out and breaks the ground with the oxen shall overtake the reaper the plowman shall overtake the reaper wait a minute the reaper is the guy that plants i mean the reaper is the guy that goes out and gets the crops but the plowman overtakes him and the treader of grapes him that sows seed. I love tomatoes. I am breaking the ground in my backyard in the in the millennium. My daughter is putting tomato seeds right behind me 
in the ground and I just broke it. My wife is behind her picking the tomatoes. According to the Bible, in the millennium. That's how quick the plants are going to come up. That's when the curse is removed off the earth. The treader of grapes. That's the guy who walks on the grapes with his feet and makes wine. I don't know why people drink things that came from smelly feet. Of him that sowed the seed. The guy who planted the grapes. But while he's planting the grapes, they're treading the wine. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine. And all the hills shall melt water. Spring water. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. So there's a remnant saved. And they shall build the waste cities. In the millennium, they're going to build the cities. And inhabit them. They're going to live in them. They shall plant vineyards. And drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens. There is husbandry going on in the millennium. And eat the fruit of them. Now imagine those gardens. Imagine those grape yards with no curse on them. No mildew. No caterpillars. No palmer worms. No locusts. No need for fertilizer. And I will plant them upon their land. their land united nuts and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them saith the Lord God, thy God and that's how the book closes Israel will be settled in their land and never ever to be rooted out what's that a type of that is a type of, of, of state that I am and position I am in Christ I am in Christ, and no one's ever going to pull me out. Israel's got that same statement. May not be Jews today, future Jews, but they're going to have the standing, the promise that I have in Christ, that God has given to them, that is your land, and you're never going to come out of it one day. Again, this all hasn't happened yet. So another thing a Christian must believe as he studies the word and gets to know the Bible and gets to know God is he has to be pro-Israel. He can't belong to the KKK and hate Jews and say, I'm a Christian. He can't blow, belong to the Jehovah Witnesses and steal from the Jews of Gentiles. Kingdom Paul, that kingdom is the kingdom of God, kingdom of, of, of uh, kingdom of heaven, which belongs to the Jew, not Jehovah Witnesses. You cannot be a Roman Catholic and go against Israel and kill them, World War II, Adolf Hitler, and then go over there and take over their land as it was your land, because it's not your land. It don't belong to the Pope. It belongs to the Jews. Watch out for these religions that are trying to bring in a kingdom. Because that kingdom is a kingdom that belongs to God. And God says, I've already reserved it for a group of people. And it's not you. How's that? 